guys, welcome back to Alex Goes Coconuts. So today I wanted to make a video on my top tips when visiting the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. The Wizarding World of Harry Potter is such a popular vacation destination that I just wanted to go over uh, my top tips and advice on how to avoid crowds, how to save some money, and how to really take advantage of the whole area. There's so much to see and do that if you don't plan right, you might miss out on way too many things. So the first thing you're going to need to know about the Wizarding World of Harry Potter is that it's located in two of Universal Orlando's theme parks. It includes Diagon Alley, which is located at Universal Studios Florida, and Hogsmeade, which is located in the Island of Adventure theme park. So you're either going to need to buy a one-day park ticket for each one of those parks, or you're gonna to have to buy a park to park ticket to access both parks within a day. Now that brings me to tip number one. I highly suggest that you splurge and get yourself the park to park ticket. The reason I suggest to do this is that if you do not get yourself the park to park ticket, you will not be able to ride the Hogwarts Express. The Hogwarts Express, as many of you know, is the train that you see in the Harry Potter series. It's a fully functioning train, so it'll bring you from one side of the park to the other side of the park. So you can access both parks using the Hogwarts Express. Now the train ride is an attraction in itself and I can guarantee that it's totally worth the money to splurge on that park to park ticket to experience riding on the Hogwarts Express. benefit of having park to park access is if it gets really crowded on uh, in one of the parks you can switch to the other park and maybe ride some rides in that side that are going to be a bit less busy. Now that brings me to tip number two. You're definitely going to want to ride the Hogwarts Express both ways. It's a different experience each way so if you do get that park to park ticket definitely ride from Diagon Alley to Hogsmeade and then Hogsmeade back to Diagon Alley. Tip number three is definitely try to visit two days or more. Um, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter is so popular and so crowded that one day is just not enough to really see everything and experience everything within the land. I definitely recommend trying to uh, schedule at least a two day or a three day visit. Three days would be best because you can visit at a slower pace and then revisit some of the attractions that you really enjoyed. But if you're on a limited budget, then definitely two days is the minimum. Tip number four is to get to the parks early or to stay late. The Wizarding World of Harry Potter can become extremely crowded during the day. So to avoid long lines and to avoid the crowds, uh, the best thing is to arrive as early as you can to the parks. Uh, usually I recommend arriving at least 20 minutes before the park opens. This will allow you to enter the park and head straight to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter and at least ride on one of the attractions and visit the area without having wall-to-wall -wall crowds. Now, if you can't get to the park early, the second best thing is to take advantage of the last two or three hours before park closing. The crowds will usually dwindle around that time, and if you weren't able to ride uh, on some of the attractions that you were really looking forward to during the day because the lineups were just too long, definitely board the attractions uh, just before park closing. So like, you know, 10, 20 minutes before park closing, get in line and you're actually gonna get through that line much faster than if you went in the middle of the day. Another really great tip is to try to stay on Universal property. By staying at one of the Universal Orlando hotels, you'll get early morning access to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. 
that is a huge advantage over other guests who are not staying on property. You're gonna get one whole extra hour to visit the parks when it's virtually empty. And Universal has tons of hotels in different price ranges. So whether you're on a tight budget or whether you can splurge on a more deluxe hotel, definitely stay on property and take advantage of that early morning access. Now, if you are visiting during an extremely busy period, I definitely recommend that you get an express pass. The Express Pass is basically front of the line access. Almost all rides at Universal offer the Express Pass. From experience, the Express Pass will cut down your wait time in half. So you can get a lot more done with the Express Pass than if you didn't have it, especially when the crowds are crazy. Now the Express Pass can be quite expensive, but actually there's a better way of doing this. If you are staying on Universal property, it might be worth uh, spending a little bit more money and staying at one of Universal's deluxe resorts. By staying at one of those resorts, you will get an express pass for each one of your family members staying in the hotel. This might actually save you more money than getting, getting an express pass for each single family member for each day. So Universal's deluxe hotels includes the Royal Pacific Resort, Hard Rock Hotel, and Portofino Bay. So if you stay at one of those three hotels, you get the Express Pass for free. Now, if you're visiting with children, definitely check the height requirement uh, for each attraction before you get to the park. You don't want to be inside the park and your child is really looking forward to riding the uh, Forbidden Journey and he's not tall enough to ride the attraction. So definitely check the height requirements uh, see which rides your child can ride on so that he's not disappointed once you're there. Now, there is something that's really great about Universal. They have something called uh, baby swap. So you can all get into line with a child that's too young to ride. One parent can stay with the child while the other parent rides on the attraction and then you can swap. So the other person can stay with the child and then ride that attraction. Tip number nine is to definitely consider buying yourself an interactive wand. Now the reason why you're gonna want to buy an interactive wand is that you can perform magic spells throughout the Wizarding World of Harry Potter in different locations. My kids absolutely loved the experience. Even if you're an adult visiting alone, you might want to purchase a wand. It's a really fun, immersive experience. Now, when you receive your interactive wand, you'll also receive a map that uh, shows you the different locations that you can cast spells in inside the park. There are basically 11 magical locations inside Diagon Alley, and I think there's nine in Hogsmeade. So each location is activated by a different uh, wand movement, and it also will reveal a, a different outcast. So it's really fun to discover what your wand will activate in each one of the locations. Now these wands are a little bit expensive, they're about $55 each, but you only really need one wand to experience all the magic inside the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. And the great thing about the wand is that it's good for life, so even if you visit Universal more than once, you'll be able to use the wand forever. That brings me to tip number 10. If your wand breaks, there's actually a wand repair shop in each one of the stores. If your wand is like starting to act funny or if you drop it and you see that the little uh, lens on the end of the wand is broken or doesn't work properly, go to the wand repair shop and they'll uh, switch out your wand for free or they're gonna repair your wand. Now, if you are gonna purchase a wand, there's several places inside the park that you can do so. Ollivander's has a main shop in Diagon Alley and it also has a shop in Hogsmeade. You can walk directly into the store and get one of the wizards or witches to help you uh, select a wand that suits your personality. Now, the shops can get quite congested during the day, so if you wanna avoid long lineups, around the corner there's an open air shop uh, that sells wands and it's virtually empty all the time. Now, if you wanna experience Ollivander's where the wand chooses the wizard, where you can watch Ollivander himself help a wizard or a witch find their wand. 
Now this is a fun experience even if you don't get chosen. Um, it's just a nice little show and it's definitely worth seeing. Now if you do want to partake in that, you're definitely going to want to head there first thing in the morning because it fills up. The lineups get quite uh, long and early in the morning there's going to be a lot less people in the group so you have a higher chance of getting picked for the wand experience. Now if you think your child is going to be really disappointed about not being picked as a wizard then maybe you're going to want to skip this experience completely but it's definitely a fun little show to see. Tip number 13 is definitely try some butterbeer. Butterbeer is this amazing drink that is sold throughout the wizarding world of Harry Potter. Uh, I would have to say it's an extremely sweet drink. It's like a combination of cream soda mixed with butterscotch and it's topped with this marshmallowy kind of buttery topping and it's amazingly good. Now it comes in different varieties. You can have it cold, frozen and in the winter months they even serve it hot. Uh, if you love the butterbeer, you can also have butterbeer ice cream. You can also have butterbeer fudge. So definitely check out all the different forms of butterbeer. It's quite an experience. Now another tip is that if you're in Hogsmeade and you see that the lines for the butterbeer carts are extremely long, uh, definitely skip that and go straight to either the three broomsticks or Hogshead, which is the pub right behind the three broomsticks. You can buy butterbeer in both those locations. So if you see the lines are long, just change place and go buy your butterbeer somewhere else. Now, if you know you're gonna eat inside the parks, uh, definitely try to eat at the three broomsticks or at the Leaky Cauldron at least once. Even though the prices are quite high for the food compared to other locations inside the park, the level of detail and the actual experience of eating in those places is so wonderful that it makes up for the price that you're gonna pay for those fish and chips. Plus the food is actually quite good in uh, both those locations. So definitely splurge a little bit and try to eat at least one meal in one of those two locations. Now a lot of people like to dress up when visiting the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Children and adults alike are often visiting in costume. It's a really fun way to immerse yourself in the Harry Potter world and I highly recommend it, but the costumes and the merchandise inside the Universal Parks are extremely expensive. So if you can purchase them ahead of time, you're gonna be saving yourself a lot of money. So what I did for my family before heading to the parks, I bought each one of my kids a Harry Potter robe and a Harry Potter tie. I bought these on Amazon for a lot cheaper than I would have paid them inside the park. A robe like this inside the park is about $124 and I think a tie is about $50. I paid both these items uh, $35 Canadian on Amazon. So it was definitely worth uh, purchasing them way ahead of time. And you know, I got myself a couple of Harry Potter themed t-shirts and some really cool accessories at Walmart and Target too. So you can definitely visit any one of those places and save yourself a whole bunch of money by purchasing all your souvenirs and your merchandise ahead of time. The actual Wizarding World of Harry Potter is not just about the rides and attractions. There's actually uh, shows and interactive experiences all throughout the park. So my next tip is to take it all in. Take in all the details, all the different experiences inside the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. You're definitely gonna wanna visit all the shops and see all the details inside each different shop. There's shows throughout the park at different times, so definitely check the show times. <laughs> So definitely uh, check out everything that the Wizarding World of Harry Potter has to offer. My next tip is to download the Universal app. Uh, this will help you figure out wait times and see the different show times and the different events that are happening inside the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. 
Another tip that I have is to avoid bringing a large backpack. Universal will not allow you to bring your backpack or any bag for that matter onto their attractions and rides. So you will have to store your stuff in a locker. Now the lockers that are offered for each one of the rides are free, but they are extremely small and narrow. So either bring yourself an extremely small bag or try to avoid bringing a bag at all. And this will save you a lot of time uh, when visiting. Now, if you do end up bringing a larger backpack, you can rent a locker for the day um, and you'll be able to do that. I think it's $14 for the day. So you'll be able to rent a locker at the entrance of the park, store your stuff in there and then continue on to ride all the attractions without having to worry about this backpack. Okay guys, so those are all my tips when visiting the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Please let me know in the comments below if you have any other suggestions or if you enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching guys, bye!